You uh, front squatting 400? I'm here to front squat 400 because someone said my legs were small. It was really rude. I think it was Bart. Uh, someone on the someone on the internet said it, and then Bart said it. I'm gonna measure them. My legs are for sure bigger than Bart Kwan's. Go to his latest video, both on Bart Geo's channel and on the Barber Brigade channel, and say Mike's legs are bigger than yours. There's no way his legs are bigger than mine. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're gonna talk about how to blow up your squat. Now you may be saying, Mike, but you're a little sucker. You don't squat that much. My best squat in competition is 590. My best set all time is about 550 for four. And I don't know if I've ever talked about this on YouTube, but I have coached an all-time world squat record. All-time, 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 all-time. Not your little federation in your county with your bumfuck nowhere carnival, upside down, left side right, clown ass referee. An all-time world record, I've coached two or three of them. So I may or may not know a little something about squatting. And we'll dig in today in the video. Be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. Talk about increasing your squat. I'm Solid Mike, 3SB.co for all the good company you want to rep with. Powerfest Expo, 13th and 14th, Santa Clara, California. 50% fact, the podcast that you need in your life. Let's go. common thing people like talk about is like how everyone deadlifts more than they squat. And the truth is the strength for both and most individuals is probably similar, but to display that strength in the squat, although powerlifting isn't that technical of a sport, it takes a lot of balance, a lot of practice, and a lot of uh, time under the bar to find that balance to be able to portray or display that strength. So although you may you know, have a huge differentiation where you're pulling 500 and only squatting 315, Know that the strength's there, it's just gonna take more practice. Which leads us right into tip number one. Frequency, in my opinion, is king of powerlifting. We need to practice the lifts like we're playing golf, like we're playing basketball. I don't know if you guys ever played any sport out there. Doesn't mean you're going 100% all the time. Sometimes we'll do scrimmages where you can only take one dribble in basketball. Or maybe we're running through plays and you're going 70% speed, you're jogging but it's just to get that repetition. Maybe you're just shooting free throws, a hundred of them, where obviously the uh, systemic fatigue isn't gonna be as much. We have external load here, so getting tired, recovery, volume, all these things matter more than in other sports, but the concepts, generally speaking, are the same. If you play basketball for five hours on a Monday, next Monday, you spend another five hours, et cetera, et cetera. Is that player gonna get better than someone who's practicing an hour, an hour and a half every single day? Obviously not, you gotta practice every single day, get that repetition, get that motor skill. So I'd say for the majority of folks, it's anywhere between two to four times a week, you should be squatting some kind of lift that looks similar to your competition squat. Step number two, talking about squatting, there's a lot of cues and we've gone over on the 50% of the podcast where people say like best cues, worst cues. And the truth is the cue is only as good as the person receiving it and who you're communicating to. A lot of people talk about pushing through your heels and squatting through your heels and leaning back and hips back and all these cues, which is good for a very beginner because often when you tell someone to squat, they'll tend up being kind of like this. They just don't know how to move their hips and knees at the same time. And so their heels tend to raise. But for anybody who's been squatting six months to a year, they understand that your entire foot needs to be on the ground. And I hate to obsess about the foot because I think it's one of the most overrated things to spoken about on the internet right now. What type of shoe you're wearing, what your pinky toe's doing, what the third hair on your second ring toe finger's doing, doesn't matter in a squat. Sorry to offend anybody out there, but it's just the truth. You go talk to Dan Bell, the biggest, baddest squatter on the planet, and he doesn't know what the fuck his foot's doing when he unracked 1,100 pounds. What I do like to think about is the shin bone, our main bone in our knee. And I think about driving that thing straight through the bottom of the ground. And so, yeah, you want contact with your toes, you want contact with your heel. I think about my entire foot on the ground for sure. But the biggest thing is finding that balance. Like we said before, the squat's a very technical movement. You're he carrying heavy loads, you're trying to con control your hips and your knees from wobbling around. You wanna keep that bar over your midfoot, but I also wanna keep my body over my midfoot. And people always talk about bar path, bar path, bar path. But if your body moves correctly, 
the bar is going to be in the correct path, which is straight up and down. talked about it a bit in the deadlift video. Um, people for some reason think that your squat needs an insane amount of volume and crazy intensity, but as soon as you deadlift with high volume or high frequency, you're gonna get obliterated. Just to reiterate the myth, your deadlift is a concentric only movement. I mean, you're only pulling up. We're not going down. The squat, we're doing both. And people think the deadlift will tax your CNS, and honestly, it doesn't. It goes back to point one. The only reason it does is for most people, you're lifting an overall heavier load on your deadlift because you're better at deadlifting mechanics than you are the skill of squatting. So with the squat though, because it is more technical, again, we're talking about frequency more often, focusing in on our form, finding our balance. Handling higher intensities in all lifts is a great tool. The specificity, if your goal is to get stronger, something like powerlifting, to handle loads above 70% more often. If you're squatting 50% all the time, yeah, you can build muscle and get some reps in. When the load gets heavier or closer to your one rep max, often now our technique goes out the window. So practicing once or twice a week, handling the loads 80, 85, maybe even 90% of our one rep max, will allow us to mentally and physically get prepared to handle maxes better. Ladies and gentlemen, a little bit on the squat, man. Leave your questions on the squat below. We can go into more detail and more specific stuff. Talking about squat, we can go over form, we can do whatever y'all need. I appreciate you, man. We over me, be a part of something big in yourself. Solid Mike, new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Catch you in the next one.